Good morning, if that's the part of the world that you're in. I'm not sure that it is indeed morning where you are. But this video is not about that. It's about extended tasks. And without further ado, uh, I should probably begin with some introductions. Uh, my name is Antoine, and on YouTube I go by the Complex Games Apologist. Uh, so we've seen a few questions about extended tasks and a few remarks on them over the past couple of days. And so uh, I'm going to get into those questions uh, in very short order. And I think that if you're looking for kind of a basic overview of the mechanic, I'm going to provide a very brief one here. I'd point you towards the video. And I do think that it is one of the better written sections of the rule book. Um, but it really could benefit from some diagrams. And when we go over the examples and the questions from the examples, uh, that is one thing that we're going to touch upon is just a, a way of visualizing these things. OK, so without further ado, um, let's jump over and start looking at what an extended task is. OK, so the first thing is that it is it's a something that is larger than an ordinary task in Star Trek Adventures. So it's something that can't be accomplished in a brief moment in one sitting. Uh, because one of the things that's a descriptor of a task in particular is something that is challenging uh, to a hyper competent bridge officer person that that's the kind of character that you get when you go through the character creation system. That's what a task is, something that's challenging. That's where base difficulty one begins. And then also is something that they can accomplish uh, in a brief moment. The question, the the tension between success and failure on all tasks really comes down to um, was the combination of the risks that you took and the moxie that you applied that, you know, we're just winners. We keep winning and winning and winning. That's what momentum is. When the risks that you took and the moxie that you invested into a task, uh, did those come off and make it happen in that brief moment that is the task? That's the question that we ask when we roll the dice. Because create opportunity, when we buy additional dice, generally we can buy enough dice to get to a point where we have a reasonable expectation that we're going to be able to meet the difficulty. Um, all tasks really come down to that combination of moxie and risks. That's the question at play. And then you roll the dice to see if the risks and the moxie were enough or not. The game master can still offer success at cost. And in a success at cost situation, you suffer a complication, your character does, and you don't get to make any momentum spends after the test. You just get basic success. So with that in mind, I, one of the things that I'm going to point out is that success at cost is definitely a situation that can and will come up and is probably appropriate for extended task situations. Um, but that is my impression through practice of actual play and reading the rules. Uh, let's get into what makes an extended task different. First of all, there's a time pressure situation. There's pressure from the outside environment, either because you're in combat and you're being shot at, in which case you probably don't need to invoke any other mechanic, or you can use the time challenge mechanic, which I think really works very well for just about any kind of time pressure situation. You just define the intervals as opposed to moments in a time pressure situation that is just in a scale of hours, in which case you could define each attempt at the task as hours, as opposed to consuming intervals uh, in the time challenge mechanic, which I'm not going to discuss in detail here. Uh, or just each attempt takes a turn. And this is the thing about extended tasks that is different, is that there may take, may take more than one attempt to complete. And so they're bigger than that one sitting moment. The things that differentiate them, their magnitude. They have a magnitude, which can be one or more. In order to get the breakthroughs that these individual little red hexagons mean, you need to get at least five work. And I'm going to talk about what work is. But after you succeeded at the extended task, then you pick up some challenge dice and you roll to do some work. And if you do at least five work, then you get a breakthrough. If the work track is filled up, then 
you also get a breakthrough if if the if it's down to zero and you could think of this like the hit point total of the extended task um or the stress track would be more appropriate because it's very much akin to the stress track or shields um in ship to ship combat when so and you can get two breakthroughs at once if you knock the track down to zero and you get five work that's two breakthroughs at the same time so there you can end up in a situation where if the work track is small enough a magnitude two extended task can be completed in a single roll and that's perfectly fine it's a thing to keep in mind when you're designing these and it's a question about well what am i really doing here what am i testing because and this is where we have to look a little bit deeper into the mechanic uh, to understand uh, what's really at play and how it ticks. Take this example of a magnitude 2 extended task. And it has, let's just say it has a base difficulty of 2, okay? Then somebody sits down, the chief engineer sits down with his base difficulty 2 extended task, perhaps to uh, modify the warp core to use an exotic form of antimatter that's just been beamed into one of the antimatter pods. Uh, the chief engineer picks up perhaps four dice, or perhaps they very confidently pick up two dice, and they have an assistant, and they might have a focus that applies. So when they roll under their discipline of four, then they're going to get two successes. And focuses, just as a footnote, that's another ingredient to the difference between success and failure is do you have focus it's mostly a question of margin of success uh and only you know it's just that little bit of expertise i'm the right person for the job can mean the difference between success and failure on tasks discipline score however has a really big impact on what comes next say that this chief engineer then succeeds he picks up two plus his discipline score in challenge dice and rolls for progress on the work track you pick up six dice. Say he has a discipline of engineering of four. Six challenge dice, and the expectation is that you'll probably roll about a five. Uh, it's a little bit less than one is the expectation on each individual challenge die. A probability, if you do a probability analysis. They can be higher. But there's a non-repeatable spend that you can only do once on work tracks, but it's also the same spend that you can do when you're rolling for damage in combat, which is you can pick up some of those challenge dice, leaving others, so you can take your good rolls, you can leave the twos and the one plus effects and so on, you can leave those on the table and you can pick up the zeros and just re-roll those. And so it's very easy to get to at least five. Let's say that the, the chief engineer does this and he gets one breakthrough and he gets maybe six work. So there's only four work remaining on the track. Also the base difficulty goes down to one. So that so that's sort of it's in a finish line mode now. The question now about the second roll, if it is to occur, is sort of well, what's standing in his way? Did he generate threat? Did he roll complications? What does the uh, opposing force do if he's beaming this antimatter uh, into the antimatter pods and setting up the injectors to take on this this new kind of antimatter? What's stopping him from finishing the job? If you have threatened the pool, this is a good time to spend it to create complications. This is a good time to spend it on the create problem spend, uh, which can increase that difficulty, which has been brought down to one. Momentarily, you can pull it back up to two by spending the threat and narrating what's happening. You know, one of the clamps is, is uh, on the injection pod is jammed, and somebody has to get it go in there at some risk to themselves and unlock it, perhaps. Um, the chief engineer is put into a situation where uh, he's distracted because there's a, he's a, one of his younger assistants who's the, been the apple of his eye is walking straight into danger and might you know, be in some amount of peril. And this really stymies the engineer because he can't make a good decision. And so maybe I just throw two threat and I propose that complication. And the player says, yeah, all right, that sounds like a meaningful complication for my character. And so the difficulty is escalated then. That's what the threat that the player is generating means in terms of the story and the narrative. So that's a really basic thing that can happen. But what if I told you that this magnitude two task 
is very easy to complete in one roll. It's very easy to get a work track of 10 completely full in a single roll. You know, that's just something to keep in mind when it comes to magnitude 2. So in some respects, magnitude 2 of 10 extended tasks, unless they have resistance, which is something that we'll discuss in a little bit, they're maybe not really the middle of the road, and they're maybe not even close. They're sort of the the kind of the, almost the, the lowest tier of where invoking this mechanic makes sense. If I have time in the stream, I'll get to what a magnitude one extended task really means in terms of the numbers. But when it comes to scooping those dice and rolling some more, when it comes to throwing some momentum to just gain additional work, you can spend one for one. One point of momentum becomes a point of work on your challenge dice roll as you spend afterwards. Then it's easy to claw your way up to 10 at least. And a very expert character might be able to claw their way up to 12. So if a work track is 12 and the magnitude is only 2, then you know, a really expert character can get there. And the thing is that the thing to keep in mind here is that the number of dice that you're rolling for your discipline score on the work track is really meaningful, first of all. And secondly, um, this, there's an opportunity cost that comes. That character has invested in becoming a good engineer. They have invested in becoming an expert scientist, a penultimate negotiator. They're very physically fit and they're capable of trekking across a desert. Those are different things that might work as an extended task. So that discipline score, rolling a lot of dice and getting more than one breakthrough at once, it's... I think it's okay. It's okay for players to be really good. And the next thing to talk about is that, well, what if they spend determination? Because I saw one of the posts was, I think there was a base difficulty for extended task. And let's, let's get into this example next. I, I don't know the, I don't, unfortunately don't know the context. So I'm just going to have to make it up. Um, because it, it was in a module and somebody said this was I thought it was really easy and uh, and that, you know, they only they did it in four roles and they spent determination and they just blew through it. Well, these are hyper competent bridge officers. This is a time sensitive situation. That's the reason that we're invoking the mechanics. So what is the pressure that's mounted against them? And they have to do it before this pressure, you know, releases. And I believe that the work was 15 on this example. So it was mag it was magnitude 4, base difficulty 4, and it had a work track of 15. And they spent determination for the first roll. So what that means is that going into the task, so this is attempt 1, and unfortunately I'm not going to be able to put up everything on the screen like I normally would were this a uh, very hyper synthesized YouTube video. Um, but something of this scale is, would be something like uh, replacing the warp core, um, uh, supervising negotiations between Romulans and Klingons who have been at war for generations. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, finding finding a lost comrade in a vast cave system that is you know is very hot um yeah f finding someone lost in a vast dark cave system uh where the uh, well we'll get into resistance in a moment here but a lot of work means that it's going to take a lot of work it means that accidents cannot can accident if you if you describe it to an extended task as having a long work track that means that a lucky break is less likely to get through it. Even the expert, even the person with a discipline score of five, rolling a huge batch of dice and scooping up some dice, once you get over about 12, it's gonna take more than one attempt to fill up the work track. That's, and that's the interesting thing because you can pass it off. You can sort of, another thing to imagine is that once you filled up the work track, the expert can pass it off to the amateur. It's coasting now because you don't have to once, once the work track is full, you don't need to roll five work any longer to get a breakthrough. Or just any work at all, one or more work, will get you a breakthrough once you've got a full work track. And so that's a thing to keep in mind about sort of what narratively is going on 
is that you know we've got this lockdown captain you know this is at this point at this point we just need more time once the work track is full and you know i haven't visited there's a misconception that can develop where like the work track is full therefore the extended task is done no no that's that's not the case and it's it's important to not think of it that way it, the work track being full means that the protagonists have have secured everything they need to succeed it means that the, it's just a, it's only a matter of time uh they've they've sort of um you could imagine this as having gotten everything off of your truck uh, on a construction job and lined it all up and maybe you've cut all the lumber uh but you you need to actually build the structure now you still you still need to build the structure. It's going to take a little bit of time. But at this point, even your apprentice, you know, holding a hammer and a nail could finish the job. So getting back to our example, base difficulty four, magnitude four, work track 15. They spend determination, which they have to the character has to have a value, which is informed by the situation. There's something about what they're doing here that is that that really makes them tick like i understand machines better than people might be a great example of a value that will work in this situation so the player and the character have paid an opportunity cost uh in the form of this value and that value like is also has some problematic components to it like that is a value that could cause value complications in the other direction certainly jordy has his trouble with the ladies because Sometimes he's not a people person, for example, and he certainly has problems with his subordinates because sometimes uh, his leadership style or the absence of a leadership style uh, causes problems for Jordy. And he has to go to Captain Picard for like, well, what am I supposed to do about this Reginald Barkley guy? And Captain Picard says, your job. Uh, so what I mean to say is that there's there's opportunity cost paid. So that determination spend, I think it's it's important to note that like the player and the character have have earned it. Let's just say that with the ship assist, um, maybe another assist from another character, maybe they're able to just roll two die twenty plus a couple assist dice and the determination spend and get that base difficulty four. Okay, so they're gonna roll seven dice. So that means this is a person with a max engineering discipline. You can only begin play with one discipline F5. So this is among the players, this is probably the only person with a five in this. So this is like his special thing. Um, so now he picks up the dice and he maybe can hit 12. So let's just say he hits 12, 12 work. He manages to do 12 of the 15 on the first attempt. So the magnitude, uh, one of the breakthroughs is achieved, and so there's only three breakthroughs remaining. The base difficulty goes down to three, and now the player, in order to get there, uh, they, they need to spend, they spend a lot of momentum kind of making sure that they got that 12 work. So it may be that he has to buy extra dice with threat now. So he buys an additional die uh, with one threat, and then he still maybe has his two assists. Uh, but if he doesn't roll any successes at all, the assists don't matter. So he probably needs to buy a second dice with threat if this is a time-sensitive situation. They need to get a warp before the Genesis wave gets them, for example. So it's plus three in the threat pool. So now we throw the dice. He gets maybe, let's say, three successes on his own dice because he has a, a focus that applies, which is not always certain. And then he also on top of that has the additional benefit of uh, the assistance and so the assistance maybe add a, an additional success so we've got four successes and now it's it's down to difficulty three the base difficulty went down to three when we got our first breakthrough okay that means that we have one momentum going into this so we don't really need to work too hard to get we can get five work and we're going to hit uh two breakthroughs because we get the finish line moment and we get the um it, it, where we when we hit zero we're going to get a breakthrough and if we hit five also um there's no negative hit points but you know we have to ask did we get five and did we knock it out to zero two separate questions so now we get two breakthroughs at once and now there's only one breakthrough remaining and the base difficulty will be two 
there's three threat in the pool, which can affect this next thing that occurs. And that three threat could be a scale three ship coming into the scene and attacking. It could be a notable NPC and two minor NPCs joining into a combat in an extended task situation. It can be you buying two dice as the game master for an attack role. So like you're getting much more perilous as an attack role. That's what three threat can mean. Three threat is what a determination spend costs for an NPC. If an NPC is going to spend determination to get two automatic successes, it costs three threat. So that's a pretty meaningful thing. And we still got one more attempt to go. This attempt is only going to be base difficulty two, but the interfering factors, the things bubbling around in the scene are now dangerous and perilous. So I think that that sort of walks through like, I don't think that that, that magnitude for base difficulty for uh, work track 15 extended task is easy at all. It is something which the chief engineer with a discipline score of five can absolutely accomplish. They can do it. They can confidently do it. They get in there and they do it. This is the difference between Star Trek Adventures and a and d style game is that you throw the dice and you're like, ah, heck if I know. Heck if I know if I'm going to like, you, you just like, here goes nothing. Um, failure is not a big component of the Star Trek genre. Peril and drama are. And that doesn't mean that the characters are always going to succeed, but it, what it does mean is that the characters aren't going to fail because they weren't up to it. And usually what happens is that if they don't feel up to it, they take a ton of risks to become up to it. Like divert all power from the life support systems, for example. That's an example of like uh, throwing a lot of threat in the pool to buy additional dice. Okay. So that was a bunch of talk about that part of it. I'm going to wrap this up by talking about what resistance is. So we got to find where our little, oh, there's resistance. So let's chat about resistance, what, what that means. So resistance keeps you from doing work. Uh, resistance doesn't keep you from succeeding. So the difficulty, as we discussed earlier, is the difference between moxie and risks and whether those risks and moxie are enough. Uh, resistance can... It counteracts your expertise. It counteracts your discipline score that's throwing all those dice into the work. Resistance uh, on a task can mean something like the replicators are off at line and you've got to prepare a banquet. You know, <laughs> you're back to doing things the old fashioned way. You know, this is a surgery which requires an assistant, but all you have is an annoying EMH that is distracting you often and, you know, preventing you from making progress. It's not going to keep you from successfully doing the surgery. Is going to keep you from successfully doing the surgery quickly. It might keep you from making progress on the surgery. So, you know, you might just roll work below five. And, you know, that the, the instances of task attempts that aren't going to get breakthroughs uh, are going to be much higher if you add resistance to a task. Extended tasks with resistance will stay at their base difficulty for longer and more frequently than extended tasks without resistance. The higher the resistance, the more often that the base difficulty will remain the same and that you'll kind of be just chipping away. So a high resistance task like resistance four, boy, that's, that's, that's a tough one. If you, if you want to design a situation where you think it's going to take that many attempts, then I mean, this is the, getting the point where it'll preoccupy the entire episode. That's the thing to keep in mind. Okay. So that's, that's the numerical effect of resistance is that it changes, um, changes the probability of breakthroughs and it makes breakthroughs further away. And that makes filling up the work track to get the work down to zero more meaningful. So a low work track, so let's say eight work, but four resistance, that's the sort of thing where we got to chip at it, chip at it, chip at it until we get to a point where we're very confident that we've got this. So that's what designing an extended task in that vein means. An example of that might be, you know, the Thomas Edison type situation, you know, perspiration, inspiration, making the light bulb. And he tried, you know, thousands of compounds to find the, the right one. So was, that was a task with a lot of resistance, 
But once they made the first light, once they made that light bulb, they were kind of job, job done. So let's talk through the different magnitudes and what their personality is. And then we're going to wrap up. OK, so magnitude one task uh, has to have resistance or it's it's basically it's just a regular task um, because the work track, if it's five, the work track, if it's 10, the work track, even if it's 20, it doesn't it doesn't mean a lick because if they if the character rolls five work, the job's gone. So that's that's what a, the magnitude one tasks are only appropriate with resistance. And what they mean is probably a situation where it's like, I should know how to do this, Captain, but it's, you know, like I can't get, I can't, there's something stopping me. So like maybe uh, a task could become magnitude one with some resistance uh, from being a regular task because of a complication that's in play. That's an example. Like a complication could cause that. A malfunctioning system might be a good one. You know, one of those complications that come from uh, rolling a 20 on the ship die. Uh, magnitude two, um, an expert, someone with discipline score five can and will get the job done in one role unless the work track is like super high or there's a lot of resistance. But the vast majority of magnitude two ex extended tasks, even the ones with like a little bit of resistance, like two players are going to be able to make it happen. They will take a lot of risks. It will consume resources, possibly up to and including of spending determination magnitude two tasks will get done in one role most of the time likewise magnitude three extended tasks unless they have a very long work track or a lot of resistance are going to get done in two roles that's just a thing to think about uh so high resistance resistance three resistance four or high base difficulty uh high base difficulty is like five you know you really got to ask yourself what what the heck's going on uh, with that, it could be that's very dangerous, and so like success at cost is what's going to happen for the first rolls. If the base difficulty is very high, so it, you know, if we could have a magnitude three but base difficulty five, that probably means it's really dangerous. And whoever goes at this problem, you know, like th this math problem has eaten mathematicians alive for years. Like there, it's it's a career ender. People disappear into their basement and draw on chalkboards for months at a time, and, you know, and. <laughs> That's sort of, they suffer a complication and it's a success at cost or, you know, no progress at all. And, you know, opportunity costs paid and a lot of a lot of threat generated. Uh, they you know, you worked on the extended task instead of doing something else for naught. That's what a high difficulty means. Magnitude four is maybe kind of almost the happy medium of what I think most people are imagining extended tasks to be. I'm not saying you should make most of them magnitude four. In fact, I think two and three are fun and usually the place to kind of if you're going to have more than one in an episode definitely make sure they're smaller but magnitude four is the place where it's going to take three rolls magnitude four is the place where you're going to experience the finish line period where the work track is full and the base difficulty is low you can delegate to an assistant it's more about the danger it's more about that finish line like got it moment that you're going to experience that you're going to experience the middle where you bit down on it and you're making progress and you're trying to get to full work track and get two breakthroughs. You're trying to go from trying to go from mm, two, you know, one breakthrough and trying to get down to one like we discussed a moment ago. And then there's the first phase, which is where you have no breakthrough. You haven't done you haven't gotten anywhere. And if there is resistance, you might be at that that kind of spinning your wheels just trying to get there even after one success you know you might not get a breakthrough that can happen if the base difficulty is high enough with magnitude four and you know like if if you if you work too hard at that first try it you know you might put too much threat in the pool that you can't keep trying so that's that's sort of that's sort of you're going to experience all three phases with magnitude four the point of being about i think the entire tale of extended tasks that I've tried to present here. And I'll look at comments because I, there's a lot of information to digest and to get out here, uh, which is why I've just kind of been focused on this. Uh, the vast majority of extended tasks are going to be done in about three roles. It's about, you know, what happens in between, you know, like player players going into the extended task, takes some risks, narrates some momentum spends, gets that work done. What do you come back with? What do you say is going on in the environment? What is the threat component of the game doing? 
what are the other players doing to kind of keep off the Neanderthals? You know, Mr. Scott is working on fixing that shuttlecraft in the Galileo 7. Everybody else is doing something. So, you know, there's the beats in between that take up a lot of time, really. So if, you know, if you roll the dice four times in a row, extended tasks are going to feel a little bit trivial. So the question is, you know, about fiction that lies in between and about the other stuff that's going on, including the opposition. So, you know, this is the same same story in general with man to man combat. I think, you know, basically they have a half life of about one round ship to ship combats. Most of the time, half life of about one, one and a half rounds. The way the system is before, you know, somebody is KO'd or runs away. You know, beam us up, go to warp. I think that this mechanic is actually really well designed to duplicate the kind of extended task that we saw on the shows. Uh, so thank you for hanging out. And if you have any questions, um, throw them down in the comments below. I'm going to hang out with my wife for lunchtime here. And I hope that this clarifies a little bit of sort of the hard numbers, you know, what work is and how it's different than expertise. Because like Captain Picard could try and eject the warp core and replace a new one. It's just going to, he's going to be like, ur, 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 ur. he's not going to not make progress. Like the characters with a lower discipline score can succeed by taking risks and with the moxie of, you know, like I'm on Star Trek, um, they can succeed, but they're not going to make the same progress that the expert will. And so that's what the X, you know, this extended tax really in a real, real meta layer. They are the time to, for the experts to shine. It's the time for Captain Picard's negotiation skills to shine, like he's got a breakthrough on the negotiation table. It's the time for Worf to trek across 500 miles of desert. It's the time for uh, Jordy to, you know, just have a rainstorm and figure it out in a minute. It's it's the time for uh, Data to beep boop on buttons at turbo speed. And that's the difference. And that's the interesting thing is, and what about the times when you don't have an expert and you don't you're not rolling seven challenge dice at once for these things? Those times feel very momentous and dramatic. It's like, boy, what if what if we could get an expert in here? And that's, you know, it's a cool thing. Another mechanic comes into play, which is supporting cast. Like, let's bring in a ringer. Let's bring in a guy who has a focus for this task and has discipline for just like that. And that's at your fingertips. And it's it's a kind of a fun thing that you can do in this game. But that's a story for another day. This video, Extended Tasks. Have a great morning, everyone.